Hello, everyone. Welcome to FMA Professionals. I'm your host, Datu Tim, and today's topic, we're going to be going over what the do's and don'ts of hosting martial arts seminars, camps, etc. of that nature. Um, <clears throat> so, real quick, though, if you are unaware of this, um, what I want you to do is, get if you get a chance today, please go over and check out the um, our YouTube channel because um, we have a YouTube channel, Datu, or I'm sorry, there's two channels. If you look up YouTube Tim Hartman or Datu Tim Hartman, if you, uh, I got two channels. There was a big debacle with that. Lost credentials. Um, things are better now. I found stuff. Um, but uh, right now it's being live broadcast to Tim Hartman. And then um, on YouTube, and then there's also the Datu Tim Hartman. The channels look very, very similar to each other. Um, eventually, I, I can't blend the two together, so um, I'm trying to figure out what direction I'm going. But in the meantime, um, if you get a chance, and I'll uh, um, put a thing on the bottom here, uh, you can like and follow over there. But we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so... Um, let me give you a little background on what's going on. So I've been, uh, doing martial arts since the, uh, since 80, uh, unofficially some backyard stuff. And then, um, about 85, I got into my, um, um, good stuff. Good morning there again, George. Um, and please, if, if you can hear me by all means, give me a shout out, make sure you know, I know you're there. I want to make sure the audio is going well because I've had some debacles in the past with this. Um, hey, George, you coming out for training? Is that what's going to be happening today, hopefully? Are you on your way? Uh, George is one of my black belts. We do a lot of uh, R&D work around here for different stuff. But, um, you know, <clears throat> anyways, uh, so I've been doing stuff since the 80s, probably about, I've been teaching seminars since uh, 86, hosting them. Uh, great Joe, great Joe. Uh, good to hear that you can hear me. That's uh, Joe is logging in from uh, Austria. And, of course, George is coming in from a far place called uh, Lockport, sort of, which is, you know, good morning, Blaine. Glad you're all here. Okay, so uh, let's get into this. I've been doing seminars, uh, well, since 2000. I've hosted at least five a year. It's over 100 events. That's 100 events, over 100 events. Um Prior to that, I don't recall how many I've done. So uh, I'm going to give you some do's and don'ts. And the nice thing is I got it from both sides. I know um, I know how um, it is to host something, and I know how it is to teach something. Um, glad to see everyone's here. Hey, Mr. Facebook user, I don't know if that's James or not, but for some reason it's coming up hidden. So, um, and there you go. So, Let's start off this topic. So uh, there's a bunch of things. I actually have a checklist to my right. I actually was prepared today. I got a brand new ring light. So hopefully the visual is better. Uh, new headset so I can hear a little better as opposed to that big clunky earphones I had. Um, so here's what we're going to start off with. When we do an event, um, to get the most bang for your buck, we need to start off with, why are we doing this? So... And, and please, I definitely want uh, everyone to chime things in. Oh, hi, everyone from oh from Greece. Hello, brother, sister, or whomever, because I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, you don't know. we we got to start with why are we hosting a seminar, okay? So this could be for profit or enrichment. Now, what do I mean by enrichment? That means further education. Generally speaking, unless you really know what you're doing, I don't recommend anyone to try to host seminars to make money unless you're doing internal seminars. So there's seminars, i.e., that I teach just, you know, that are geared just for my students, which I teach. And then there's the ones where I bring in an outside um, expert or specialist. So uh, I guess that's where we have to first start off with. So specifically, I'm really gearing this towards people from the outside coming in. Um, but let's let's hit the uh, the first part. Let's say you want to do seminars for your students, which I think is a great idea to get used to all the pros and cons of doing this, the all the intricacies, like what am I doing wrong? 
what am I doing right? How do I get better at this? So first of all, we need to have a topic. Secondly, you need to um, have a registration form for people to sign up, uh, some form of way of paying for this, uh, stuff like that. Um, you know, if you've been wanting to do seminars, you can do a topic. Like, I'm going to do a disarm topic. Now, this may be all the material that you're going to be doing in the club, but this gives them maybe an early access to it. Or what it'll also do is maybe give them more in depth and say, listen, you know, we do disarming in class, but we're also doing Sinwalis. We're also doing this, that, and the other thing. So this is going to be a real like one to three hour breakdown of how to do the disarms. Maybe you're doing uh, reversals of disarms, uh, you know, how to counter a disarm. Or more importantly, when I do disarm reversals, it's more to show the holes in the disarms to get us better at closing them. Um, but that's, you know... Uh, let's say you do uh, we do staff work. I don't really have time to do that in my day-to-day -day classes uh, as much as I want to. So I might have a staff seminar. I might have a... Um, uh, so I do praesis arnis. It's a synthesis of what I do here. So I studied with... Um, you know, I'm, I'm friends with the family. Well, I'm, you know, I was a student of Remy and Ernesto. I'm a good friend with Roberto. I go visit him whenever I can, obviously not down during the lockdown. Um, I really do the Praces family systems and a lot of arts that contribute to that. So, you know, I got into Balintawak because that was the last art professor trained before forming modern Arnie's. Um, I do small circle jujitsu as an enhancement because professor was best friends with Wally J. I'm not certified. It's just I've gone down that path to get more insight <clears throat> of the things that we were doing. I've done a lot of different things that contributed to the, the, the creation of the, the modern Arnie synthesis or and what I prefer to brand more as the prices are these synthesis so uh i might do a topic more on that you know so I'll sit there and say all right we do a little we do a little blint walk <clears throat> but i don't have a specialized program now recently i've done a, i started a weekly class on wednesdays uh just to a sl small select do people but what i've been also doing is to prep for black belt tests i'll do stuff like that um now let's get into how to host a seminar with someone from outside the club. There's a lot of different things we need to do. And that's, like I said, we start off the bat, profit versus enrichment. So generally, I don't host these types of seminars to make money. Uh, I may make money, but what I do is I bring people in for enrichment. So um, let's use the example. I, uh, one of the arts I practice is Bondo, a Burmese martial art. So Dr. G. I can go see Dr. G at the seminar anytime I want, which is great. But when I go attend training with somebody, um, so I have to take a weekend off from the club. And this is what I do for a living. You know? So if you're a school owner, whether it be a part-time or full-time, why would you host a seminar? Um, so like I said, enrichment. Now, I could go to wherever I want in the country or the world to train with said people, but I've got to take time off from the club, which could possibly cancel classes, which could uh, mess up things with customer service if I don't have people to cover my classes. Um, I have to, uh, I lose any type of income that was coming in that weekend because we're closed. Um, so let's say I have to go to California or say I have to fly anywhere. Now we're looking at, say, you know, three to five hundred dollars anywhere in the continental US. Then I gotta get a hotel. Okay, so now, you know, you're talking a buck, buck fifty a night. You know, let's say it's $150 a night. So that's uh, if I get there Friday, that's Friday night, Saturday night. Yeah, I, if I only do two nights, now if I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go in big. So I'm gonna at least go three nights, which is four days of training, maybe four and a half days of training. Get, you know, if it's on the coast, get try to get a red eye back. So um, if I go three nights, that's four fifty. It's a thousand dollars ish, you know. So, uh, so it's like eight hundred to a thousand dollars between the airfare, maybe a little more, and uh, and the hotel room. Then I got to do meals. So that's probably fifty, forty, fifty bucks a day, four days. You know, that's forty bucks. You know, that could be two hundred dollars. And if you're eating with a group, like let's say you go to a training camp. Um, you know, everyone might, you know, they're going to restaurants, which usually are more expensive than the norm. You know, you, you might end up 
paying out fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, and that doesn't even cover training. So, my idea of hosting a seminar is that I can bring people into my place. I can put them up. At, I, I'm lucky. I have a place to put them in my house. I've got multiple guest rooms, um, and most of the people that come in are okay with that. But I'm prepared to put them in hotels as well. I have a corporate rate at a local hotel I've got worked out so you could work these things up that this is the official hotel for the school and get a decent rate so um, right around the corner I've got uh, um, our hotel that we're using at the moment is uh, the country and in suites so rates just went up obviously COVID you know things are getting, getting a little different so I get a, a king bed or two queen bedroom any of the normal bedrooms with it one king or two queens um that is 99 dollars a night plus tax or i can get a suite which is either one king or two queens separate room with a pull-out couch and that's 119 a night now and if they're bringing people with them and stuff you know blah 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 still 119 a night now obviously there's gonna be taxes that includes um that includes, you know, you got your room. They've got a hot breakfast, which they are serving right now, uh, more more of a cafeteria style. Um, they have a pool, which you can do by appointment, and then the gym should be opening up shortly. But in normal situations, they have all that going on, which is a great pl- thing also to send guests who are attending the seminar that you're hosting. So it's good to have this set up as well. So, you know, People, I just I just had one of my guys today. They're coming to the spring camp. Where should I stay? I just gave him the information. Uh, he's working out a schedule. When you do a corporate rate versus a block of rooms, now I don't recommend a block of rooms. I I recommend corporate rates. So corporate rate, you get the same rate all year round. Where a block of rooms, you might have to guarantee a certain amount of rooms for the event, and they usually let the rooms go long before martial artists register. <laughs> We we are procrastinators like there are no tomorrow. And most hotels these days, they have a 24-hour cancellation period. So a lot of times, the best thing to do is, like right now I'm telling everybody, if you're coming to either the May camp that we're doing in two weeks or the August camp, the, the Remy Prices Memorial Camp at the end of August, book the rooms now. If it turns out you don't do it, you can always cancel the room 24 hours beforehand. So... I got a place for people to stay, both the instructor and or the the participants, if I get out-of-school participants. I can have them at my home. And when I have them at my home, okay, hotel costs are off the board, okay? Now, when I do seminars, I really don't care. I'll tell people, listen, um, you know, um, stay where you want. I can help you out. Um, I'm looking... At Facebook too while we're talking about this because I want to make sure that the broadcast is going um, I you know um, people ask where they want to go and stuff like that okay so I got I sidetracked my I'm fault my fault my fault sorry um, so you know you need to know where to send people <laughs> you need to tell them where to go <laughs> uh, you need to know where you can and cannot host an instructor um, if they're willing to stay at my place like I said I've got two guests two uh, two guest bedrooms and plenty of room. Um, you know, all I got to do is pay for meals. Okay. So uh, now all I have to do is with the seminar fee. Now, what could that be? You know, I've paid fifteen hundred to two thousand um, dollars, and sometimes that includes the airfare. You know, so now, let's say uh, I bring someone into town. That um, so. Uh, I used to bring Dr. G into town. He liked me. He, he charged only $1,000. So I flew him up. Uh, most of the time he stayed at the house because he loved my dogs. Uh, I paid the seminar fee, and he was coming from Columbus at the time. So um, that was like a $250, $200, $250 flight. So that's $1,250. Okay. I didn't have to close any of my classes. I could run all of my classes. And my people get to see him walk through the door, and some get excited. And next thing you know, they're signing up last minute. Now, um, once again, I'm talking about enrichment. So this is why I'm bringing, this is exactly why I brought Dr. G in. I went to a couple of his training camps. They were outdoor events. Um, Not my cup of tea. 
Um, and I'm sorry, I'm greedy, I'm selfish. I want him to meet for me. I don't want to share him with all these people. So when I go to his camp, I have no choice but to share him. When I bring him to Buffalo, you know, before he retired, um, I I set everything. I set the schedule. I get to ask questions whenever I want. I set the topics. Um, you know, it, I mean, you're paying for an employee basically to do work for you. Um, now I'm not I'm not belligerent about that, and I realize that there are certain topics that he might not cons- uh, he might not want to teach me. And it could be the fact that I have to learn this first before I do that. Uh, some topics he just might sit there and say, listen, I don't teach this be- until people I know and uh, and I vet that. And I get that. I mean, there's I don't teach offensive blade work for quite some time because I'm concerned what people might use or abuse it. Um, so now when I host the seminar, I charge a fee. Now, I don't care if I lose money because I'm not losing money. I'm getting back the investment I would have done if I would have flown down to train with him. Now, now fortunate where he was, I could have driven because there's no quick way to get there by flight. But it was a six, seven hour. It was like, let's see, he's two hours south of Columbus where he used to live. So that's a seven, eight hour drive depending on traffic. So that's 16 hours round trip. I had to get a hotel, um, you know, meals, extra stuff like that. Okay. Uh, once again, close my school down and stuff like that. Um, I can start and finish the day in my own bed. I mean, the benefit of that alone is great, you know. And like I said, we already talked about if I had to pay all that money, you know, before training, before training, you know. So having him come to Buffalo cost me twelve hundred plus meals, okay, versus me spending twelve to fifteen hundred dollars going somewhere and not have any training yet. So you know, but I'm, once again, and when I host the seminars. You got. If you're looking for enrichment, get your mind wrapped around that. If this is what you're looking to do, what you need to think about is that you're not losing money. Mall morning. Oh my God, my brother, my my brother from another mother. I haven't heard from you in a long time. Hey, when things get up, we got to do that seminar you were talking about. That double header, brother. Um, I hope you and the family are doing well, my friend. So, um, anyways. You could stay home, host somebody, not disrupt your life. Um, I'm doing hybrid seminars right now where I've got, I'm host, you know, I'm doing monthly gigs. I'm making good money. I don't have to leave the club. Now I bring somebody in. I realize I'm spending that for my education. You know, when I, when I do this thing, like, let's say, let's mall morning. Let's mall, mall, mall ugh, we're mall morning. I love the guy. Okay. Um, when I do, when I do C-Lot, this is the guy I do it with. Uh, I've seen Mall Morning in Toronto, Detroit, um, DC, and wait for it, Rome, Italy. Uh, I was doing a tour over there. I was in Naples while he was teaching in Rome. I shot down to attend the seminar. Uh, this guy is top notch. But if I had him in for a seminar, to, to, for me to learn the C-Lot more in depth, Hosting, having, opening up to the public is just deferring my cost. So, you know, if I come up $500 short, I didn't, short, I didn't lose $500. I only invested $500 in that education. And, wait for it, people say, well, everyone else uh, offered, you know, they, they only had to pay like $100 ahead or whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter. I mean, because I'm going to get more time with the person. I'm going to really dig in deep get my stuff going and I'm learning material that I could teach later. Okay. If I learn one technique, I have that for the rest of my life. Okay. So when I do this, I look for enrichment. I look to see if I can monetize it, make money off of it while I'm doing it. If I break even, I didn't, I made a profit because now I have that material for the rest of the life and I can teach that material. Now, um, and that's what I do. I mean, you know, I, I, I pay for continuing education. That's it. You know, I, I do all these different systems to keep me sharp, to look how they sometimes, like I hung around, everyone thought I was a Kempo guy for a while. I, I never did Kempo. My friends did Kempo and I cross-trained with them, but I never have any rank in Kempo whatsoever. But I, lo- I know a lot about Kempo. Um, 
But I looked, I look at Kempo not about that as a martial system for me to train, but I like, I like their delivery system. I like how they explain things. Things have code words. You know, you'll hear this technique called clutching feathers. It's a hair grab. When I do seminars, when I attend seminars, when I host seminars, I look for these bits and pieces that I'm sitting there and say, hey, listen, I don't need a new system all the time, but what can I learn from that system? It's not like what they do, it's how they do and why they do. And sometimes they have a better way of explaining things than we do. Um, so, so right there, you know, we've got to have that mindset. And like I said, for me, I bring someone in for continuing education. So it's not about making money off it. And I can invest a lot less money by hosting them in my school. There we go. Invest because we're investing in our future and our students, you know, um, so I get this, I, I bring someone in to continue my education. Uh, so let's say I have, um, let, let's say it cost me $2,000 to bring in mall. I can open it up huge or I can have a private thing. I can sit there and say, all right, you know, 20 spots, a hundred bucks a head. Um, wow. That pays for it right there. If I get 20 people, which <laughs> having mall morning in mall brings in people. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, with everything said and done, you know, no matter, once again, it's about deferring that, um, deferring the cost of my investment in my future education. Now let's talk about how we promote this event. So we need to have proper flyers. Now what people make the mistake and a, uh, if you're doing YouTube and I might, I'm going to see about, I can, or not YouTube, Facebook. Yeah. I'm pulling up on my other screen right now. Um, a lot of times people overdo um, flyers. They put way too much information in there because like, let's say you're using this, um, you're doing this on uh, promoting it on Facebook, which is a really great way because wait for it. Facebook is free. Instagram is free. I wait for it. So is Twitter. Now, um, the thing, unfortunately, if you don't have a big following, you may not be able to uh, promote it through yourself. So you have to go to other forums and discussion groups inside of Facebook to put it out there, which is great. I mean, Facebook, I think, has the most versatility. For a business, it is the number one. Uh, I know some people don't like Facebook, you know, politics and all this other stuff. Listen, at the end of the day, it's a free service. And if they don't want certain things on there, you know what? Build your own platform. When I used to host a discussion group, if I didn't like what was on there because I was concerned about what kind of trouble it might cause, get stuff off there. But for the business, I will say this. Facebook, during COVID, helped save my business. And we can talk about that in the future. Um, there's so many free tools in there and then you can also pay money to get a better bang for your buck. So I'm pulling up, um, um, let me see, what do I got going on here? I'm going to pull up an event. Holy cow. I don't have a lot of this. Okay, here we go. So I, I haven't done my due diligence and let me tell you something. When I tell you, when I'm telling you stuff, some things I'm not doing exactly what I, what I'm telling you to do and. And when you sit there and say, well, why aren't you doing it? Because you're not me. You haven't done this. You haven't built that clientele. So there's a lot of steps I can skip because I have a clientele already built waiting to come to my events. But while you're doing that, you have to know the do's and don'ts for that. Um, and then, you know, and even still, you know what? I got to do more because I can make it more beneficial. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to present a screen. I'm going to come up with, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why it keeps telling. You know, I'm going to hit don't show me these tips anymore. Well, you know, I should probably keep that in there just because. So I'm going to go over to my Facebook page. Um, so this is my event announcement. Now, I'm going to do this by via Tim Hartman because you're going to see me as Datu Tim, the host. This is on my Datu Tim Facebook page, and it's taking time for me to switch over my profile. Um, you know, 
Okay. Um, okay. So now I'm viewing this as a participant, not as my, uh, as not as me. So here is the cover art. Now I made this on Canva. Once again, Canva. Um, I will be putting a link down below because I do now have a an affiliate program with them. I just have to do stuff. Um, but, you know, I made the fill iron. I didn't jam pack everything in here. Just did some minor stuff. Okay, what's the title? What's the topic? The date. And it's on Google Meet. Okay. People don't read. They're lazy. They want everything here. But unfortunately... There's a rule, or there used to be a rule. I still think it's here in uh, in Facebook, where if you want to monet, if you want to do paid advertising in the future, because this is a hybrid event, so I'll actually sometimes I'll advertise it in other countries to get participants. If um, more than twenty percent of this is uh, of the graphic is text, then they won't monetize or they won't let you advertise. It's, it's like twenty or thirty percent. Um, so I try to keep it at a bare minimum because all the details are down here. Um, so what's the time? It is noon to two. It's at Horizon Martial Arts. It's a hybrid event, though. I, I put that up there, I, and this is phase one. I should have a bigger description. That's on me. But I have the seminars held in person or on Google Meet. I put that at the bottom of the flyer, and there's the Google Meet logo. Um, so um, it's got the location here, and here's a ticket button. Oh, no, I don't have the ticket button in yet. Um, oh, dear. Tickets are over here. I'm an idiot. I don't register for events like this. <laughs> I'm the one that sets everything up. So I click the button, and it brings it over to the portal I use. Now, I use, um, I use Spark. I like it. Uh, I know there's other, other, um, office management, martial arts school management stuff out there. So, um, I have all the information here little extra icon here i get all the capture all the information in this for my students or and then you know what's the fee it's 35 dollars. what's the date uh september 18th and it's tappy tappy phase one so i actually have a whole series of um i'm gonna stop hold on one second i'm gonna stop sharing and uh because i'm gonna open something up just as an FYI. So you can do, you can have people sign up via Square um, and other things too out there, uh, do stuff via PayPal, but I've got a pre, pre-done pre page. So I'm going to open up my checkout pages. There we go. So um, now, I don't know why I'm down there. Hmm. It's a little slow today. So now, what I can do is go through and look at all the different checkout pages. So I have my, I just put up a thing for private lessons, a five pack of those. Um, and normally, you know, so you can click on that and see, see what it is. Here are my sales over here, which is zero because I just put it up there the other day. I have a Halloween tournament we're doing. Uh, Mother's Day kids then out for the school. So um, I've got two people signed up for that so far it's one sale but it covers two people but it's mother's day it's, it'll, people will sign up later um the staff seminar which i have a bunch of people who are going to be signing up over the weekend right now uh here's my sales so i can view the purchases and it tells me that uh two three four and someone signed up for the wrong one that was my fault so five people so far have signed up for that um the kickboxing that i'm doing at the moment you know, and it's got all this stuff in there, the camps, stuff like that, as people are signing up for different things. Um, you know, so I have all this stuff going on. And it's a good platform for registration. So um, so when they click something, it'll take it to that phase. Like, So my website takes them to the respective checkout pages. You know, here's Tappy Tappy Phase 4. So you can sign up for that, you know. Um, so that's... You know, now, but when we do the flyer, don't jam everything in the image. It's hard. Like I said, um, 
I, um, you know, I got, it's the Masterclass series featuring me. It's a uh, topic is Modern Honey's Tappy Tappy, phase one. The date, which I really don't need it there per se. Um, but I like putting it there because people don't read. There's a bunch of information here. Um, you know, and, um, oh, well, there isn't any information I didn't put in there, but this would be the, the topic and information. And then you can get your, your page and I can share and stuff like that. This is all free on Facebook. I mean, not the merchant service stuff. And recently I just found out they do things for tournaments. And by the way, next week's topic is going to be how to run a tournament, um, and stuff like that. And that once again, do's and don'ts. And there's going to be some good information in there as well, hopefully, that you will like that. So, um, but, you know, if you jam-pack everything in the cover, it's hard to read, okay? Um, you know, like right here, I go, okay, so Datu's Corner on Monday is going to be, wait for it, should black belt certification expire? I already got people giving me grief on this, and I think most people will actually agree with me once they hear what my thing is, but we're going to talk about that. So we'd love to see everybody there. Um, you know, once again, here, and here it is. Here's a description. Okay. Um, so should black belt certification expire? Datu's Corner Live. Join Datu Hartman for this broadcast, addressing whether black belt certifications have an expiration date. Okay. Uh, you can watch and participate on Facebook um, Monday, May 3rd, and, and it should be at, I'm dyslexic, and sometimes uh, things go at 11, uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the show will be broadcasted on the World Modern East Alliance Facebook page and group, Dr. Hartman's Facebook page, uh, profile and page, YouTube channel as well. Okay, so it's got all that information there if people decide to read. I've got people already not reading, so people are starting to argue with me. Um, <laughs> I got someone challenging me now. So, like I said, we don't want to jam too much stuff in here, but uh, another Datsu's Corner Live will be on the um, on the 11th. It'll be a special time at 1 o'clock on Monday, and it's Americanized Arnis. Is it better than the, uh, than the, the Filipino, original Filipino version? Um, and I got someone from the Philippines challenging me, um, because they said I should try them and I didn't say we were better. It's just a topic, so, but it's good because people are looking. Facebook can promote stuff. Okay. So I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole. So I'm going to get back to where we're going. All right. So there's nothing wrong with print flyers, but usually schools aren't really interested in this. I do print flyers in my club. So I have them all over the place. People walk through the door, bang, right when you walk in. What I also do is have slideshows. I have multiple television screens because I do virtual classes. Um, I've got one in the lobby. We used to watch the news on that. Now I keep the news off because, well, it's the news, and we know what the news is, and we don't want to watch that anymore. But I'll have I'll have slideshows that I've created on uh, on Canva. Go figure. And it will promote upcoming events. Um, I'm seeing if I have one here. Uh, no, I do not have one in the queue at the moment because I have to update. So uh, what it'll do is it'll show like, hey, what's the topic of the week? What's going on? Any special events during the week, i.e. the, the parties. So uh, if I go back to that, uh, oh, here we go. I'll do this. So this is how you advertise it in your club. That's the point of my conversation. But sometimes I'm like, well, what's your point, Tim? <laughs> so, um, and uh, I'm actually looking to see if I have something on there. But I I have a smart TV. Um, I prefer to use smart TVs. Okay, here we go. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is share this here. So, um so here's my Canva stuff. I'm going to uh, play this so we can see it. So first thing it does, Horizon Martial Art update. And, you know, my TV is new enough where it will allow it to play uh, MP4s. If I couldn't and it could do a, a, a slideshow, I would do each of these as a 
PNG or JPEG. All right, so we just finished this week up its forms and fighting, and then it'll go into an advertising. Wait for it. Here it is, the Flow Staff Seminar that I'm teaching this Saturday. Um, and then here's the Mother's Day party we're having the following week. And then from there we do other things. So it'll, we'll talk about testing, which is coming up on the 10th through the 13th. And each group... Um, now it flows better when it's on the television. This is, you know, it's a little laggy right now. So I go through this and this is a phenomenal method of internal advertising. It's free providing you have the technology there. So I have a television posted on at, on my training floor. I have it on the wall so I can do the virtual and hybrid classes. Um, and here's a good one. I put the kids belts up there, which I have to update on behind on this so people can see what belt level everybody is and they can see the progression we have testing next in two weeks so everyone will go up and i was like oh look my kid's name uh, my kid's name's up there isn't that great you know um so and i just do the first name and last initial i don't want to get into uh any other issues there people know whom who we are also it takes up too much real estate um and uh, then, and there we go. And that covers all the black belts ever produced by the school. Boom. And it just goes and it starts. And then, yep, we're a proud supporter of the Buffalo Bills, Sabres, and the uh, Bandits. Uh, professional lacrosse team, in case anyone wondering what that is. They were national champions a couple times. And then um, I have a bunch of these on, on uh, cue so I can just take stuff and move them around. I would change the dates. Uh, when I do this... Um, when I set up this thing down here below all the screens, if I'm going to make a video, I could go and just pick certain pages to show up and I can skip a whole bunch as I create this. So I can say done, but I'm not going to do any of that. Okay. So there's a way of internal advertising. I announce it at the beginning and, or, uh, beginning and end our classes. I make sure that everyone understands one thing, that a seminar is extracurricular and people don't have to do it but I, I make sure that they understand listen i'm letting you know because i don't want i want you to have the right of refusal not oh geez i wish i would have known about it if you would have only told me um and i've had that happen in the past i forgot to tell certain people and it just you know it was just a mistake and you know i go from there so um proper flyers make sure you have all the information at the top or all the just the key points the bulk of the material, registration and stuff on the bottom. Now, make sure you have waivers. Now, um, anyone that comes on the training floor for any reason, you know, for, for any martial reason, even if it's a parent holding the pads, everyone signs a waiver. There's horror stories of people going on the floor to help somebody out, and the next thing you know, their orbital bone is fractured. Before they go on the floor, they got to know what they're getting. I go, hey, listen, you know, I we do a, here's a little benefit thing. On Saturdays, we do kids' classes, and I do it more of a family program where I'll tell the, um, I'll tell the family that one of the parents can go on the floor for no extra fee. You know, the kids, when they go to school, they have homework, um, and you don't know how to help with the, I mean, you, you, some of the homework you can help with and some of the homework you don't. Well, martial arts, we have homework too. And... Um, you know, if your kids, Hey mom, I don't know how to do this form, or I don't know how to do the kick or punch. You, they might not be able to help, but if they've done a bunch of this, they'll know how to hold a pad at least so they can help at least some aspect and get that family involvement. Who knows? Might end up being a student. You never can tell, which actually has happened on more than one occasions. So for a seminar, everyone needs to have a flyer. And what I also have in there is a media, uh, waiver in there, a media release. So, uh, when we saw the, um, when we look at the, um, let's go into the brand. Okay, so today, um, I'm going to take my picture out of this real quick. Now, this is the second last camp we did prior to COVID. That was our our, our um, May camp, and um, so I have a waiver in in my events, whether it's tournaments, seminars, etc. That 
they're giving me the rights to use their photos in advertising. Okay, if they don't, they have to. We have to make other arrangements. No one's ever complained about that. Uh, but I do have some people who I keep out of certain photos because they work in law enforcement or something of that nature, and we need to keep their likeness off the internet. Okay. Um, the other thing, here's the big one: insurance. Now, check with your insurance. Some companies now make you have to have separate seminar insurance. But if you're if you're bringing someone in, you know, in general, as a, if you're doing martial arts, even if you're just training out of your house, you should look at insurance. You know, that oh my guys would never they'd never sue until someone gets hurt. First time someone get hurt, someone cries foul. It's different up in Canada. Um, I mean, they actually have a social health care so um, they get it they get health no matter what we have to pay for insurance some businesses don't do that and limited you know limited uh, coverage so of course someone gets hurt people are crying foul we got to deal with all this other nonsense so um, definitely make sure the event is make sure you're insured you know and see if you need a rider so when I do tournaments I need to have extra insurance for that you know um, Okay, so let me see here. We talked about flyer. We talked about registration. This is my checklist. I just talked about insurance. Uh, here's the big one. Profit versus enrichment. Remember that. Now, here's the big the biggest one. And we also we also went over on how to how to create flyers. That's the more stuff, but the biggest one is protecting yourself. Okay? And this might not be what you thought. And I've talked about this before when I would just do live broadcast before I devoted this as a channel. Um, but let's get into this. When you bring someone in for an, uh, for an event, you need to lay out everything ahead of time. You need to have um, all the cross the T's and dot the I's. So how many people out there have hosted seminars in the past? Let me ask you that. Anybody, anybody? I know there's a little delay, so. Um, there's a lot of shenanigans that happen because of seminars, and people don't understand the big picture. So I'm gonna pro we're going to talk about protecting yourself on two methods. Um, so one. And this is this is one. Um, I've got people that don't necessarily want to attend the seminar. Oh, Ivan, good Ivan. Um, so not everyone wants to attend the seminar, or maybe not everyone can can do the seminar at the time that it's at. But I, I had I've basically had a protocol. I've always been nice with the instructors, where um, if someone came out to teach a seminar. If any of the participants wanted to do a private lesson with the instructor and it didn't cut into my time, I didn't ask for a dime. All they had to do is whatever the instructor was paying, pay that to the instructor, or charging, pay that to the instructor. So uh, let's say your hourly rate is $75 an hour. So um, I come to you... Russia. Well, I had Michael Harone here. Michael Harone's been out here a whole bunch of times. Uh, Leah Harone's son. Great job. Uh, OGE, original Harone Screamer. Harone Screamer. Um, and some people who wanted to do private lessons with him afterwards. I don't charge extra for that. He charges them. I don't. I don't put any service fee or anything like that, providing you attended the seminar. If you didn't attend the seminar. Then they need to pay something towards me, and this is, and people wonder why why I want to do that. I'm like, so I flew flew him out, I put him in a in a room, I fed him, I did all these things, and you want access to him, but you don't want to contribute to that, okay? So someone reached out to Michael Harone. Actually, two people in the area reached out to do training with him. They weren't planning on attending the seminar. And I said, Mike, you should take the money, but they need to pay me. And 
we talked. He knew exactly where I was coming from. It's like he understood that I I was taking care of his travel. I was taking care of his meals, taking care of his lodgings. If these people wanted access to him and they weren't going to support the seminar, which would have been the contribution, then they need to contribute to all the expenses it took me to have. Because especially, think about this. If I lost $500 or $1,000 on the trip and they would just pay him $75 an hour if that's what his fee was, how fair is that to me? You know, when I, and, and here's the thing, I've had people tell me, oh, you wouldn't let me see the instructor. I paid for them to be here. My job, I don't have to, you know, when I host someone out here, it is for me and no one else. And you need to have that communication with the person you're bringing out, okay? Uh, you might say, they might sit there and say, hey, listen, uh, you know, do you mind if I do some private lessons while I'm out there? Sure. And you work out all the logistics, now, if, and I generally, I don't let people do private lessons off site because I've also had another thing almost happen and it happened to a friend of mine. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're paying all the bills for a person to be there and someone wants to do a private lesson with them but not support your seminar, and you said, yeah, you'll do something, you should ask for some form of contribution to cover the expenses that it took you to bring that person out. It's only fair. You flew the person out, you put them in a hotel maybe, you, you paid their seminar fee, and you're feeding them. Well, why should you take all of that financial um, financial burden and someone bypass all that? Because if this person, like I said, if they would have attended the seminar, I wouldn't have charged them anything. That would have been my contrib their contribution to me to get them there. Um, and then whatever the arrangement between them and, and the instructor, it's between them. I don't care, you know. Um, long as it doesn't cut into my schedule. But here's the other thing that happened. Someone tried to do that with one of my instructors and it was going to turn into another seminar. So they weren't going to take any of the financial risk. So I call bullshit on that real fast. But a friend of mine up in Canada hosted a notable martial arts instructor. Someone's calling, I'm not going to answer that. Hosted a noticeable martial art instructor. And um, what they didn't work out ahead of time is what's going on. And this person ended up doing a seminar down the road. And my, my friend lost money on the event because they didn't set this level of exclusivity. If someone wants to come in and do a tour and say, hey, Tim, um, I'm, I'm going to do a seminar for you, but I got another guy that wants to do a seminar with me, but he, he, he's done this before. He's done martial arts before, or the system before, and you know your seminar is going to be a basic seminar, and they want to do an advanced seminar. Okay, I'm okay with with working with people that way, but then both instructors need to split the bill, split the financial responsibility. What this guy did is double dipped, so he charged the full seminar fee for my friend, got another seminar fee from the other guy. The other guy never contributed to the hotel, the flight, or anything. Um, so wrong and like i said i had i had michael out here and someone tried to bring him in you know i'm hosting him for a seminar and then they wanted to do something while he was in town which would have ended up at a seminar and they're not sharing in my bill so it's simple you want them fly them out yourself simple as that fly them out separately um i had people who wanted access to professor and you know um And things happened. It was more for an interview. We went back and forth on things, and I decided not to. And the, the guy created a big stink about it. I'm like, why? I'm paying for him to be here. You're not. You want the interview? Contribute. If you're going to take time away from me, I'm paying for him to be here for me, and you're taking time away from me, make it up to me. I mean, that's it. I mean, when you're the host, and this is the whole thing about protecting yourself financially, you need to make sure that you protect yourself financially. You know, so when a person comes up, we need to talk, you're hosting and go like, okay, I'm bringing you up for an exclusive deal. You come to Buffalo, you do a seminar for me, and then you go home. You're not doing any other gigs. If that's what you want to do, or if you're sitting there, hey, Tim, I'm going to be on tour. Can I stop in and do something at your place? Sure. Now the price structure changes significantly because you're not coming in just for me. You're going to do other seminars. 
So they're not going to charge their full bill. So let's say they charge me 2000 for the weekend to, to be here in Buffalo to do a seminar for me. But now they're going to do a one-day seminar for me, which would, let's say that's $1,000, you know, plus, you know. Um, I wouldn't pay $1,000 if they're doing another seminar down the road. I would say, all right, I'll do a percentage with you, but I'm only going to guarantee you. Uh, I, but I, but the guarantee uh, would only be $600. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, hit a minimum of a thousand dollars that's only that's half of what you normally would charge me and uh and there you go are you are you hey george are you in the building yet or are you uh are you texting from my lobby he <laughs> did that last time um so you know you need to clear these things up and just find out what what's going on because you may think you're on the same page as somebody but you're not you might not be you know, and um, that's why I, people ask. You know, you know, I've I've been uh, okay. Made a stop. Okay, so he's on his way, but still not here yet. Okay, cool. Um, you may think you're on the same page and still not be on the same page. You might be on the opposite side of that same page, but there's still something going on. So, um, so let me wrap things up. Let's let's go in here. So first of all, um, I'm gonna check this off on my thing. Are you doing a seminar? for profit or enrichment. And I, I'm telling you right now, profit's not the way to go. If you make a buck while you're doing further education, you are so far ahead of the game. If you do it, even if you lose, okay. Even if it only costs you $500 for that investment, that material, you have the rest of your life. And for everything, every lesson that I've paid money for, I made my money back tenfold easily um, because this is what I do for a living this is what the topic is FMA professionals even if you're not professional even if you're looking as a non-for-profit club it's about saving money versus paying the full bill by yourself maybe a group of you can share in the cost let me see so what did, here we go Ivan uh, the ones I've done the guest instructor and I have agreed uh, total payout expenses plus X amount of days, one day for me, uh, one day of the seminar, one day for private lessons with students. Then all the student fees go through me. Yep, you can do that too. Yep, yep. Don't own a school, uh, no insurance. Uh, yeah, you, you might want to. You might want to look at the insurance, brother. Of course, I don't know where you're at. Where? What part of the world are you in? Um, and this is the one downside about this: the uh, the lag time of facebook oh uh, so so give me a shout out where are you from ivan because i can't figure that out um from what i'm looking at here so um all right so profit versus enrichment texas okay all right ivan yeehaw well maybe i'll see you on my next texas camp uh, i do something um in dallas having since covid and then stevensville stephen stevenville done down uh, down there we've done a camp there as well so yeehaw <laughs> all right so um and definitely if, if i'm out that way and even if you don't have time to do a whole thing swing by it'd be great to to meet and greet everybody so first of all uh you want to you decide what you're doing the seminar for secondly make sure you're covered insurance and waivers Third, have a good registration format. Whether you do it on paper or I showed you some electronic ways with the software I do, you can easily have a link through Square and doing stuff. And with the with Spark, the nice thing is I can have a built-in waiver, electronic waiver set up ahead of time, although I still like having a paper backup. Make sure you're doing proper flyers. If you're, you know, don't put it all in the image because it gets too congested. Make sure there's stuff to look underneath. Um have a separate paper flyer and promoting in your school. You can do electronic flyer on televisions. I still have the print flyers right when you walk in. I got uh, tables in my school. So you have little tabletop units that people can see, you know, printed insert flyer. Now, yeah, I'm going to do a tour of my school in the future of what a professional Filipino martial arts school can look like. Um, protect yourself. Make sure that you um, cover your butt from all the different things you know uh, make sure that you and the host are on the same page when it comes to um when it comes to doing 
uh, you know, paying out what you're doing and stuff like that. You know, okay, what's the numbers? Does it include this? Does it include that? I mean, go through the checklist. You know, if you're a hosting event, are you paying for travel? Are you paying for lodging? Are you paying for meals? What is the seminar rate going to be? These are the go-to things, you know, and there's plenty of opportunity to make more money off of that. I mean, if we're thinking about, or to minimize cost, because if you're selling t-shirts, don't do a t-shirt for the event. Do not, do not do that because it's just, they're way too expensive uh, to, to, you have to buy so many to make it cheap. And I've seen, including myself, I have, I still got inventory for events that are a decade old, uh, keep more for souvenirs and I give them away. Now I've given more of my seminar shirts away than I've ever sold. Uh, usually for the camps that I've had here in Buffalo. Um, but you could, you could be selling sticks, knives, whatever it gives, you know, if the person's going to bring equipment in, find out what they're going to do, set up and figure out if you're going to do private lessons and stuff like that. Um, and if you want to see about other places that might want to share, maybe you do a, a double duty where, Hey, listen, the person's coming in for three days. Would you like to do a, an in-house event? at your school and then just talk that over with the instructor what the cost and stuff like that so um i hope everyone enjoyed today's topic please uh go over to my youtube channel um tim hartman look at that one tim hartman you'll see this ugly mug in there in a color photo versus the black and white that's the old one um although it'll be on both eventually right now it's streaming directly to the tim hartman one and um and uh you know, uh, go over there, like, subscribe. What you'll get is notifications when these things come out in the future. Let's say you can't be here, part of the live broadcast. Um, here's a here's a question. Uh, while we're here, do you guys? Um, how is the uh, how is the? Um, thanks. You are welcome, my friend. Well, I'm on among. How is eleven o'clock doing for everybody? Um, so I'm going to do the screen share real quick. So this is the, uh, this is the page right now. You'll see that this is a colored version right here. There's one with a black and white. That's the old channel. They both have the same banner. I'm going to change the other one up a little. Um, but right here, um, FMA professional is, is live at the moment. If you go to the playlists, uh, right down here. FMA professionals, the new one will pop in there. So the first one was how to develop a seminar career. Second one was how to make event flyers, which we talked about last week. Um, this one, this week's going to go in there for how to host seminars next week. Um, okay. Th uh, you are welcome, Thanos. Um, next week, we're going to uh, do how to host a tournament and recommended rules or not necessarily recommended rules, why the why I use the rules I want I use and people don't always agree with what they don't like what I'm doing per se, um, and uh, but but when I explain why they understand the big thing for tournaments it's about time it's all about time and uh, you know you want to make sure that you don't uh, you don't sit there too long because people get sick and tired of. Uh, waiting around for stuff okay so datu's corner on monday should black belts expire the following monday uh which will be at a special time at one o'clock americanized our niece which just for all of fma our niece kali eskrima is it better than the original version it's already being a barn burner i have someone challenging me from the philippines uh to a fight already hoo-ha this is going to be a big topic we'll get into all that Okay, so everyone, please, you know, first of all, thanks for tuning in. Everybody stay safe and stay sane. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone in the future. And uh, you know what? Thank you for turning in to FMA Professionals.